Hey guys, what's going on? This is going to be a pseudo kill Jaden guide, but it's going to mostly be about how to plan out uh, your CD rotation and how you're going to go about tanking certain situations. I'm going to use kill Jaden as the example because it's the current boss that people have the most trouble with and you need a rotation for it. You need to have a CD rotation and figure that out ahead of time helps you out makes things easier and makes things go a little bit smoother so this is going to be about how to go about planning that so first off uh, let's, let's assume it's week one so all of this whole video we're going to assume that tomb just came out it's tuesday night and tomb just came out so what you want to do is you want to look at the discords, look at Twitch, because people will be streaming it. Guys like Sloopbag will be streaming their stream, or will be streaming the raid. There'll be a bunch of people streaming it the first week from all different kinds of POVs, and people will be putting up videos and all that. I know when Tomb came out, there was videos up by like noon, one o'clock of normal Kill Jaden, uh, no, noon one o'clock eastern time so the servers hadn't even been out for like three or four hours and there was already videos on youtube about normal kill jaden so you use youtube you use or um twitch you can go on the discords people will be talking about the new raid and you can go on the forums or mmo champ or anything like that and people will be talking about it and uh, you'll see what people are having issues with so the main thing for tanks in on Kill Jaden is Felclaw and Armageddon Hail. Those are the main two things. With the secondary one, Armageddon Hail should be done by immunities, but sometimes you have to take it as a tank. And it's very easy if you have the Felclaw debuff, you're generally not going to want to take it because you're going to be taking massive more massive amounts of damage because the initial hit is physical and Felclaw reduces or increases the amount of damage, physical damage that you take. So ideally you don't want to do that if you have Fell Claw. Otherwise you can just do a basic uh, Demon Spikes or Shield of the Righteous, whatever, and you should be fine. Now Fell Claw, the main tank mechanic, is what hurts a lot of people. But once you get into it, once you learn it, it's actually the easiest part of the fight or one of the easiest parts and honestly the dangerous part is his auto attacks outside of Felclaw because once you get a CD rotation down you're gonna have your CDs up and your health barely gonna move or it's gonna move in a way that you want it to or you can predict so you generally know how it's going to move once you've done it a couple times or you've done the Felclaw debuff a couple times so Going into it, you're going to want to look at Warcraft Logs. Assuming you haven't touched the fight at all, go to Warcraft Logs, and then you would go here, and then you go to Kill Jaden, because that's the guy we're looking for. Switch it to Heroic, or Normal, whatever. Uh, but for this case, we'll say Heroic. And then you're going to look for your class, by all classes, and then you're going to look for... Ideally, you're going to want to look for your spec. Sometimes people with your spec, if you're a weaker one, like a demon hunter, you won't generally have people do it the first day. So you might have to wait till the second day to look it up. But uh, by the time that people who need this guide get there, there, are, there will be a log up. So I play Vengeance. So I'm going to go to Vengeance. And then I can look at the top talents people use, the trinkets, legendaries, and same thing over here. I can see exactly what people used for each fight or for the fight and figure out what the general best in slot is for uh, whether it's trinkets or uh, talents or whatever. So I know that Kill Jaden, they added a 10 minute enrage on it. So if you go over 10 minutes, you hit the enrage. So if you want to if you have bad dps you're probably going to get closer to the 10 minute mark if you have good dps you can get these eight minute times i know my first kills were in the eight eight minute time we didn't even hit nine minutes i think our first kill was like 840 or something like that and that was before they added the enrage because they had the added the enrage week two so 10 minute enrage timer so if you want to maximize it go to duration and then you want to look for ones that are closest to 10 minutes so i'm going to go down 
find the first English one. So Brian, I, and then I would click on him, and then I'd go analyze the log. So going over the log, what one I would look for. So I want to look for, first I want to look for the timing of Felclaw. Uh, if I have to do the Armageddon Hail, I would do, I would look up the timings for that. Uh, I don't in my raid because we have enough immunities that between mages and paladins and hunters and demon hunters, there's all kinds of immunity, so it's best to have them soak so that way you don't take any damage. And like I said before, if you have the Felclaw debuff, then it just causes more issues. So you want to find Felclaw. So you go to damage taken, and then abilities, Felclaw, the other one doesn't matter. And then this will show all, all the damage taken from Felclaw. So what you want to look for is, uh, so the way he does it is he does it every 25 seconds or so. So that's why the damage looks like this is because it'll be one tank, then the other tank, one tank, then the other tank, and then keeps going on. So you guys, you swap each time at five stacks, you swap. And there is a, he, what he does is he cat, he does a cast, then he up, applies the buff. Two seconds later, he does the first hit and then he does five hits every two seconds. And then from the last hit until the end of the debuff, or at the end of the buff he has, is two seconds. That is the window for you to taunt, for the off tank, or whatever the off tank is at the time, to taunt. Because if you wait until after the buff goes, he's gonna do an auto attack and hit, the ma and hit whoever has the debuff for a ton of damage. So you wanna taunt in that two second window. And I'll add in my weak aura bar for helping you with that. I, I made a bar that shows lines and every time it hits a line, he does a fell claw. So then it shows you the exact window that you have between each fell claw and between each, uh, or between the last uh, debuff and the end of the buff. So he does one, two, one, two, one, two. And so you want to talk with your code tank, figure out who's going to take it first and who's going to take it second. So we'll just grab this guy. We're going to hit the plus button. So what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to show his buff times up here. So this is this window is just Felclaw. It shows you what what times he got hit hit by it, and so that way we can look at uh, buffs and debuffs later. Or if you want to look at it this way, you can if you click it like this, then this shows the Demon Hunter took first, then the Warrior, Demon Hunter, Warrior, Demon Hunter, Warrior, etc., etc. So figure out whether you're going first or second. I just chose the Demon Hunter just because I personally take it second. And the way that my co-tank and I did it was the first week, he took it first each phase. And then the second week, what we found was it was easier if I took it first going into phase two and phase three. Uh, specifically phase three because of the way he does uh, Felclaw. If you look here, this whole bit, it's because he casts a darkness in between. He'll he'll do Felclaw, and then halfway through it, he'll do a darkness, and then he'll as soon as he comes out of that, he does another Felclaw. So timing wise, for for me and my co tank, it was better to have the DK take it because he can just DS it no problem, and doesn't have to worry about cooldowns. So it was just easier. We found it easier that way. So okay, so we got Brian's Felclaws up here. So then if we want to see what he used during it, all you got to do is you go there, click on the tank. Okay, so you click on the tank, and then you can go to buffs, and then you can just go over it, and this will show you what buffs he had up. If you want to look at Fiery Brand, you can then you can look at Cass. Reset the zoom, and then if you make it easier, you can just click this, and that shows you whenever he casted Fiery Brand. So then going back to the buffs, we can just take any window and just look. This is when he got hit. This is when he cast Fiery Brand. These are all the buffs that he had over the duration of this time window. So if you want to minimize it, so he only took four hits here for some reason. So then now we can see that he took four hits, and in that window of the, the four hits, 
these are all the buffs that he had up. So he had Sack at the end, he had Archimonde's Hatred at the beginning. So that way, if you want to get an idea of what other people are using, then this is a good way. Otherwise, you want to go into, go back to the damage taken, O Clause, go to Events. So then what this does, we'll get rid of Firebrand. So what this shows is every time he took damage from, either he, either he took damage or got absorbed or dodged, parried, whatever. So every time something happened with from Felclaw to the tank, in this case, Brian. So then you would look at the time and you'd write down all of the times. So I wrote it down already. So then this is the first phase. Intermission. Second phase. Intermission. Third phase. So then from here, we can look at it and see that it was roughly, Felclaw happens roughly every 50 seconds, give or take a couple seconds. So then, so that you know that you need something every 50 seconds or so. Firebrand is 60 seconds, so it's every, you can use it every other. It won't be up for every single one unless you have boots. If you have boots, then you can have it up for every single Firebrand. So Firebrand, every other, so that covers, in this case, you can get the first one, and then it covers these two, and then you can get it every, and then every other. So then all we need to cover is one, two, three of these fell claws that he won't have Firebrand up for. If you use Demonic Confusion, it's a minute 50 second cooldown, or minute, minute 30, so which is 90 seconds, and 50 seconds times two is 100, so that gives you a 10 second window. So Demonic Infusion will be up every other because it's a minute 30 and he does it every minute 40. So you'll have it up, you'll have Demonic Infusion up for every other. That's why I recommend Demonic Infusion because if you have Firebrand and Demon Spikes up, you'll be fine. You don't need any externals, you don't need meta, anything, anything else just helps. As long as the healers are keeping on you, that's all you need. I've done it several times where I just use Firebrand and Demonic Confusion. And then, so that so there's those two. Soul Barrier isn't as good here because the initial absorb will only take, as you can see, the initial absorb will take a tick, maybe two at most, like looking at all, all these damage numbers. Like this, it'll prob it would probably absorb this one and then part of this one, and then the minimum absorb will only do a fraction of these, maybe 10% damage reduction or, or so, depending on, on the hit, how many CDs you have up, like Firebrand and the externals, whatever. So Solar Barrier isn't recommended here. Demonic Confusion is recommended. Last Resort is fine for learning. Uh, it can be used if your DPS is low. You can use it twice in a fight, however, you have to do it on either the first and during, before the first intermission or right after the first intermission. Otherwise, you cannot get two uses out of it. And I don't really recommend that because it you're going to have Firebrand up for both of these. And for the second one here, you can have meta up or externals or whatever. So there's not really any need for it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine for relearning. I recommend it if you really, if you're really having an issue with Felclaw or your healers are having issues get, applying externals properly, then that's fine there. But in general, demonic confusion would be better because it, it guarantees the uptime. If you have a high haste or if you have the legs, some people have uh, had positive effects from that, so they don't feel they need demonic confusion. Uh, it's mainly used before. And again, with, with Demonic Fusion and with Firebrand, you want to use them before Felclaw. So I see a lot of guys, and let's go back to his cast. So I see a lot of guys will go through and they'll use Firebrand like halfway through. So I believe he did it, yeah. I believe he did it here. Come on. Sometimes it acts up if you do it from the, this one up here. So see, he took two hits and then he used Firebrand in the middle when Firebrand was already up because he had not used it since the beginning of the fight. 
which you shouldn't do. You shouldn't use it at the beginning of the fight. Unless, the only time you can do that is if you're going to have externals already ready or CDs ready or whatever, but I don't recommend doing it unless you are taking it second, unless you're taking a second Fell Claw, or you don't even get a second Fell Claw, or, and or if you have boots. So if you have boots and you're taking the second Fell Claw or you don't get a second Fell Claw, that's fine. That, that's the only two times that you would use it on the pole. Otherwise, I recommend just saving it for Fell Claw and it'll make things a lot easier on you. But like I said, a lot of guys, they'll, for some reason, they wait until the middle of the, of the debuff to cast it. Don't, don't do that. Cast it beforehand. You can get, if you only use Immolation Aura, you can, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, like 13 seconds or so. I think it's 13 and a half seconds of Firebrand up time. And you only need it for about 10 seconds. So if you cast it beforehand, you can get in the initial autos. And same thing with Demonic Confusion. If you cast it beforehand, you can have Demon Spikes up for the autos. So then going into Fell Claw, you're going to have more damage reduction, which means the healers can top you off faster. So you're going to have a little bit easier time. So cast Demonic Confusion or Firebrand before Fell Claw, not during. A, uh, any Absorb Trinkets, you can save those. And I, those I do actually recommend saving because the later ladder hits will hurt you more because you get the debuff. So if you get like uh, Reliquary, I believe it's 50% damage reduction up to X amount. Uh, that I would recommend saving for the last two hits because it's 50% damage reduction, which means you can get two hits out of it. So you can get it. You can save that for the last two. Same thing, Archimonds, Hatred Reborn, save it for like the last two. And that's that's the only case I would save it for. Also going into it, you can have, uh, I would recommend saving up Painbringer while he's casting and then keeping up Painbringer as much as possible during it. And also if you're going to cast meta for it or if you're going to ha- call it for an external, if the external is going to be up if it's a if it's a longer one like a 12 second like iron bark then again you can cast you can ha- call for it uh, about uh, about when he starts the caster cast time for uh Felkla. and meta you can do it about 5 seconds before the cast time so that way you maximize the effectiveness of it because you're not tanking after you get the fifth debuff so there's no reason to apply the de- the buffs before or, or in the middle of it because all you're doing is you're just taking more damage for no reason. You're only screwing yourself over and in turn your healers and then your raid. So figuring out how to or which abilities you want to use. So I got the times here so every 50 seconds we went over fire brand is every 60 so you can use it every other. And demonic confusion again every other. Uh, meta I would recommend using it for the middle one in the second phase, and then you can use it again for the middle one in the third phase, and then that's about all you're going to be able to use it. You might be able to get one more use out of it if you, um, if your fight length is super long, like you get extremely close to that 10 minute mark, but generally you're only going to get two uses out of it. You can get a third if you use it on the pole. But that again, that's also assuming you have a, a longer fight time. And then with meta, if you're going to use meta for it, so the in-between ones that you have Firebrand. So like I said, Firebrand and Demonic Confusion works here. So this will say Firebrand and Demon Spikes slash DI. And then put that there. And then again, this is going to be for every other one. And then all you need to do is fill in the blanks. So, make this a little bit cleaner. All right. So, we got the first phase done. If you have a second one here, you can use meta there, call for an external, like a sack or something, um, and then have demon spikes up. If you uh, don't want to use meta here, for whatever reason, uh, you can use, uh, like I said, any higher damage reduction external, like uh, 
Guardian or uh, Sack or something, and then Demon Spikes uh, tied in with it. And again, you want to use Demon Spikes as much as possible while you're tanking, actively tanking him, but again, you want it up as much as possible during Felclaw because it is physical damage reduction. And Felclaw is a physical ability. So then we got to figure out for these middle ones. So, Iron Bark. If you have a Druid, Iron Bark is up every minute and a half. And like I said, it's every 50, sec or 50 seconds. So every two, every other puts it at, at uh, 100 seconds. So you can have Iron Bark up for every other because uh, it's the same cooldown as DI. So if you really want to maximize this, you can use uh, you could use like Iron Bark here and then use it on these two and then save it here and then you can use it with these two in betweens. So I got lucky. I sometimes have two Resto Druids in the raid, depending on who they want to bring in at the time. And so if you get two if you have two Resto Druids, you can use an Iron Bark for every every single one. And then whatever other externals can go for your other tank or it like the, the whole external thing, you need to figure out with your co tank with what they are, uh, with what they need and what they are. Because, um, like, my co tank is a DK, so he doesn't need an external cooldown. So he can just vamp blood, demon, and uh, death strike, and he'll be fine. So I get free, free reign over the externals. So I can use them whenever. But this way, you can use as minimum. You, you can do this if you have one resto druid. You could essentially do this with just that, with just their iron bark. So for the middle one, say you got a second one here, uh, what like one minute, uh, eighteen seconds. Here you could do like meta and iron bark, and then use DS. And then here, uh, because if you got if you got this one, then this would be pushed back to like somewhere around here. If you if it's up meta, the same thing. And then same thing at one of these. We'll say it's this one, because for me that's what it is. And then for this one, you do DS and. Uh, like whatever other externals you got so guardian angel or sack or uh, cocoon won't do you any good it will absorb one hit um, trying to think what else so uh, paints up so ideally guardian and paints up are your top two because they do the most damage reduction and guardian has um, it has the cheat death effect of it can save you. So this is what a cooldown rotation would look like if you only have one, if you only have a Resto Druid and you only have a, or you have like one other healer with an external and your co tank doesn't need the iron, doesn't need the Resto Druid. And then you would, you would just save it up for this. But it just depends on who your co tank is, whatever. If you, uh, Recommended trinkets for this would be like Demonic uh, Dark Moon deck Immortality because it gives a lot of armor. And if you have, if you want, you can use an Absorb trinket. Some people have used it, but I'm not a big fan of them. If you have to use one, Reliquary is a good one. Um, Exoskeleton isn't really that great. Infernal Contract is fine because it's gives you the increased damage taken afterwards but you're not going to be tanking during that time so it's not that big of a deal so infernal contract is actually pretty good for this and you could use it every two minutes so you could use it for like this one and for this one or whatever or you could like use it once each once to twice each phase and uh, two to three times in the last phase same with uh, reliquary So yeah, this is uh, that's pretty much how you go about pre-planning it, figuring out. I know this video is kind of long. I, I was hoping to make it shorter, but there was a lot more to go over than I had initially thought or I had initially planned on. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so this is how you make a this is how you make a whole CD rotation. This is what a CD rotation looks like. If your healers have issues saving CDs for you, talk to your raid leader. Just talk to your healers. Say, hey, I need X ability here. All right, so that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'm in the Demon Hunter Discords, Tank Chat, whatever. Uh, you can go to your respective Discords for each spec. And each one has a channel dedicated to each spec. So you can go in there and ask any questions you have, any specifics if you need help with it. Uh, people are more than willing to help you out. So thanks, guys. Have a good one.